bonding is kind of weird since we all live in different states actually so we can't actually like meet up we do play games together still uh we we started scrimming recently actually um before we actually had no practice we kind of just steamrolled teams without it um me and two of my teammates dip and benji we actually played together on a team before in the past so we have some sort of um experience together but other than that it's kind of just it's usually just comms and telling each other what we want to do we all trust each other in that aspect and then for like the jokesters for, uh has to be the funny guy ali is kind of like you know he's gonna do something stupid right uh i kind of keep us together and keep people like doing the right things in a way dipple's our leader and benji's kind of like the quiet guy the guy you can kind of trust kind of thing yeah Trust is absolutely what we saw in that map to uh, absolute heartbreak on the side of Winthrop University. But for Northwood Dryad, it seemed like they, I mean, again, they don't care. It seemed like they were never down 8-4. They were just out there playing Valorant. This is something that Dark has even talked about before. He says, we're not really worried about losing a map to anybody. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a grand finals, it doesn't matter if it's a qualifier. We're comfortable that we're going to win everything. And so far in this grand finals, it has gone that way. Yeah, and now things get a whole lot more difficult as we set our eyes out towards Split, a map that we just saw. Again, changes needed to happen. Changes is what we saw. Unfortunately, things didn't go the way of Winthrop, but they put up a good fight on this map uh, in the series uh, just the other day on Monday. But it, miracles would have to happen for this to happen for Winthrop. Not only have Northwood never been pushed to a map five, they're obviously 55 in one in series record. A reverse sweep would have to happen here for Winthrop. And again, a map that looked good, but when we saw it yesterday, we did see it with the nerves. Now we're three maps deep. This has to be a different look from Winthrop here on split. Yeah, a reverse sweep is so difficult in Valorant in any grand finals. We've seen it happen internationally once for a Game Changers Championship last year, but besides that, nobody has been able to make that one happen. So it's going to be a challenge for sure for Winthrop. Hopefully that little break that they had in between these maps was enough to reset and go again on this map of split. And I was wondering here on the defensive side for Northwood if we were going to be seeing something different because it is the same composition that they played when they're playing St. Clair's, but uh, Forza is not on this duelist role that we always see him with. It is Dip once again before in that last map of Fracture we saw him in Jet, now he's on Race. Yeah, now on Ray. I mean, yeah, it's interesting because, like you mentioned, right, Furpsa is just coming from a Ray's performance, but not a map, unfortunately, that Dip can get any value out of that, uh, that pocket Sova pick. So sticking to that duelist role, Furpsa at showing. Flexibility, I guess, is what you could call it. Going from an insane duelist player now uh, playing the Astra, which is a com complete, complete opposite. <laughs> that is the complete you just flip it on its head, absolutely. But also, yeah, I, so it, it's interesting because for this map that could be either the last map or the initiation the initiation of a, a reverse sweep, it's also a moves that is not on the duelist, right? And yeah. this is what we've been talking about. But here he goes into that sky where yesterday he was a little bit more quiet, if anything, giving more support to the team rather than getting those kills. Yeah, I think for the change for moves, to me feels a little more comfortable because as a duelist player, you want to be set up by your initiator. So now, as an initiator, Moobs has a general idea, or probably a pretty good idea. How he wants to be supported. Exactly. Or how he can set up Flair, who is now rocking that solo duelist spot. So, I mean, this is it, Dryad. Map 3, Northwood University looking to make... Uh, uh, add solely as an honorary member with that 3-0 prediction. <laughs> uh, otherwise, Winthrop have to do it in reverse sweep fashion again a third map in a row winthrop university they start on the attack and looking at the player reactions after there. losing that second Damn. map for winthrop you need to start high here you need to start yes. strong for winthrop and you have this composition that kind of enables you to do that right but flair has to be on his a game for this map and nazi came out hot in map one again in that fisher series we saw a glimpse of it on Fracture. It looked so good. But now has to try and do it again. You mentioned Flare Dryad, and he's quick out towards his B site. Deals with the first. It's Benji gone. But back site, Furpsa still stands. And sure, he's playing the smokes, but this guy can click heads. 
The, the, the Astro play is not going to change anything. This guy, when he has to get those headshots and get the kills with the ghost, he's going to do just that. It seems like every single pistol run that we've seen so far is Furpsa going insane, getting those multi-kills, and he gets taken down, but the damage is done. Yeah, and I mean, where does Flare go? He's just been spotted by the Trailblazer. Now Darkus gives himself up. Snake bite sent out. Good flick there from Flare. 180 to find the kill onto Ali. So a 2v2 is where we stand. Paint shells will force dip away. I mean, it only takes a blast Enemy pack, but that's remaining. not even needed. Spam comes through with the frenzy. Head has been found. An A77 with a tall Enemy task ahead of him. Finds him first, finds him next, and A77 with the clutch. And when it seems like it was over, it's an A77 that steps up massively for the last couple of kills. Secures that pistol round for Winthrop, and I mentioned it, right? They need to start high. That's one way to do so. An A77 that the desk, both on Monday and today, have talked about this guy. The consistency that he has, it's something that by itself is a winning factor for Winthrop. And, and you mentioned it, right? Needing to start hot. It seemed like Winthrop are kind of just moping in that round. Dancing around, giving up free kills to Ferbsa. Ferbsa had three kills, I think, before anybody even knew he was there. He's just bang, 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 finding heads. Yeah. But A77 now rallies the troops, right? Calls everybody back into that huddle with a huge clutch win to say, guys, we're still in this. And he does it again. He catches Ferbsa. Giving up too much space. They're trying to take too much space, I should say. And he's expecting another one and another kill is what he'll find. That is the second one for this round. A spike planted. in the meantime is going to get planted on that attacking side of Winthrop post plan Gets activated here. With the class 6 and that read of A77. He knew it was going to be the aggression for Norfleet. Gets those two. And even with the confidence that he got, the Vanda was going to be more than enough. Only damage there. Sometimes the right click is your friend. Other times, not quite the case. Starkest disconnected from the play. Hoping to scoop up something outside B main. Not given a whole lot. And you have options. Do you go down to the spike here in this one or do you look to collect a kill? Maybe a death, grab a couple of alt orbs. You yourself, seemingly, maybe given one over and yeah, absolutely nothing there on the way out. A flawless round for Winthrop University. Uh, and the resurrection is starting to happen. We're two rounds into the ritual. <laughs> two rounds into the ritual. We're going to see if it turns into a third one, one here. Remaining. With a bonus that can look strong with an A77 ready to go. Playing a little bit more aggressive even on the Sentinel roll and, and having that battle. It, keeping this flawless also helps out so much because that's not what we've seen before right it's been messy pretty much every single round those mm -hmm. pistols the anti-eco the bonus it always costs so much for that winning team but winthrop it is looking to four more when they are quick out towards mid paint shells to back them away dip showing signs of force They're saying hey we're not gonna give up this space for free so you till traded back and forth but i mean flare keeps going caught with boom button hand flare will find one but that util does eventually get that kill traded right back moves goes aggressive a headshot to ali with the specter it wasn't enough for the kill and the combination of utility there with the nano swarm and that boom bud was just so clean. Both of them timing out. When they're Fire getting standing. out of that smoke, but the energy gets Spike too. Down, B. Absolutely bananas. Two players just walk through the smoke completely dry, not expecting yeah. a single person. Instead, they're met by two. And a couple of rounds do swing the way of Winthrop, but as soon as Northwood gets the option to play the game with rifles in their hands, they scoop one up. And, and this is interesting because yesterday when I was talking to Moob, something that he mentioned was they're not they don't consider themselves very good at split and he said this this is not our best map we had a close run uh 13 11 that they ended up losing against fisher for that map and, and now with a chance to kind of reevaluate what those changes have to be but you need to come in with a strong mentality of not that it's not the strongest map but how far can you take it against northwood right that, that last map was so close you lose it just by one round and now it's aggressive once again towards mid Wow, yeah. A nice little skirmish. These teams continue to show where exactly they want to play. And it's no secret, right? When you play split, you need to have something here on this side of the map or else you're basically just yeah. corralling 
yourself to the extremities. We haven't seen a whole lot of extremity play, actually, especially from this attacking side. We haven't seen uh, any lurks out towards A. It really has been uh, maybe somebody waiting outside B main at the most for the attacking side until mid control has been found. If the neutral tab, the players get spotted. That means you want to have a little bit of a heavier presence towards A as there is only one there, but that one is Furbsa. Yeah, that one is Furbsa, and this guy can be a problem. That smoke can dissipate here momentarily. No, instead he pushes through it. Comey was ready for it, though. Heads up play from the Omen. Darkest tries his hand, but he's immediately taken down as Ali finds himself in a tough spot. He'll push through the smoke, a cage to work through as well. 11 bullets in the magazine. That's not a whole lot to try and fight your way out of a 1v3. Let's see if he goes with his better judgment. The economy, not the best, and it does seem he wants to back away from it. Yesterday, when we got to see Winthrop on this map, or on Monday, when we got to see them, they were actually on that defensive side, giving so much space towards mid, playing all the way back, like you said, on more of those extremities. And for this defensive side of Norwood, that is not even an option. You see a heavy fight towards mid, and then the, the play around that utility and that neutral set for this specific round to be able to secure it. So I'm wondering if that's going to change eventually, where they have to give a little bit more of that mid space. Play around the way the Furbs that has been doing, right? More reactive. And even right as the spike gets planted, he tries to make a move, of course not. Gonna be enough for that one, but it went through that for that secured the three rounds. Yeah, and I mean, we're four rounds in, round five just around the corner, five seconds away. Dryad, we're seeing that. We're talking about it, which you, makes you think, right, that Northwood have to be thinking about this mid aggression and, and the conditioning that has been happening here from Winthrop is, well, mid aggression once more. Moves finds a kill on to Dip. Happy to sneak that one away as they back up and look to play strength in numbers. Util a plenty for this attacking squad. And it's super aggressive once against the worst mid. It was three players. Dip goes down, but then it was Dark is able to react in time, and the Util that has to be invested just to get the spades is there for Winthrop. Showstopper. Yeah, Ali getting a little crazy with it. Flash comes out, barrel spotted. No way. Darkest walks away. Two kills, a snake bite to cover his tracks. And just like that, the round's been flipped on its head. Northwood, one player the lead. And you know the Darkest is there, but inside of the smoke and so up close, not so much. Two kills there for that Viper. And the things turn around. The round turns a little bit more for this out of Northwood. On these leads, on this men advantages, they're able to secure them right at the end. Dark is though, not connecting. Spike down, B. And yeah, Moops finds that kill. Furbs so wants some more. Moops still healthy, but only for a moment. It's A77, down to 11 HP. It's five per player he has to deal with, and he falls to the first. Once again, Furbs out just on this B side, locking it down. And being so patient too, where maybe you see one of the players get taken down, he could have repositioned, but he stays strong and every single time it just works out. It's insane what this guy is able to do now on the Astra, on that controller. It's something that we don't get to see much of, and, and with that, the Cosmic Divide becomes available. Yeah, and if you're Winthrop or a Winthrop fan or a family member in the audience with us today, you definitely would have liked to see Winthrop get a bit more behind them before allowing Northwood to find ways back into this game. A couple of rounds where, again, Winthrop wish they could have those ones back. Darkest getting some cheeky kills. Furbsa also doing the same, but in that same breath, Winthrop Fight for the extremities. Out towards B main, they go five players strong. Two players now down for the defense and information of plenty with that ultimate from 877. You get that info, but can you get the kills? The defense playing all the way back. Dip goes down because of it. Planted. In a 2v4 to work with Nasi. Slow darkest, trying his best. But for this round, it's not going to be enough. Benji once again in a clutch situation. If anybody can. Benji can, but a good setup. So difficult. From Winthrop. Yeah, you can't imagine he gets past many of these crossfires. We'll find the first Nazi. Peeks out after that off the contact of moves and closes out the round. So two round lead is where Winthrop land. Six rounds into this one. And Nazi, uh, the man at the end of that round to find the kill. He's also very close to another huge tool for Winthrop's success. 
And one of the things that changed there as well, right? We talked about the last couple of rounds, the heavy presence towards mid that we saw from Northwood. But for that round, there was not so much of that. That's part of it because of the utility, the ultimates that became available for Winthrop. It was a showstopper with the possibility of shutting down one of the players that wanted to come in, even those seekers that are seekers that are going to be now available for this round. So uh, a Northwood that is willing and okay, giving that space early on, but they lose the round because of it. Uh, I want to see how this play is going to work out with nobody too close from the A side. And, and I mean, it's another lead here. Not as dominant as we saw in Fracture, but with the lead, with the previous round win, it's Winthrop University to call a timeout, work their way through this one. I think you, it's something that you set your eyes towards. The ultimate that stands out to me the most, especially on this map, is Benji's lockdown, right? There's a lot of options for that ultimate and not a whole lot of ways to deal with it, right? You're not bringing yep. in the Hunter Fury. If you are going to deal with that lockdown, you either have to have the most perfect paint shells, which I would imagine Benji's going to keep you on your toes as to where he's placing it, or maybe the showstopper. But then even then, Flair's putting himself, you know, kind of putting his body on the line to be able to spot that showstopper, take care of it with the rocket, and then what, right? Who's protecting that ultimate? Probably everybody. Yeah. And it's interesting because in the map pool that we have for these grand finals, this is the only map where you don't see that constant kill drift from everybody. That kill drift <laughs> being the meta. This is just something that for Northwood works out and even compares to the Cypher on the other side that would play very similar to what we got to see on Fracture. But a kill drift, like you said, with that big win condition that the lockdown is, allows Northwood to have that extra advantage with those ultimates. In A77, a player, uh, typically the initiator, last two maps, Fracture and Split, we get him here on the Cypher. He has found heaps of value. Uh, it, it kind of escaped us in Winthrop's first series. A77 is a guy, if you let him play off of his utility, whether that be the Gecko, whether that be the Sova, and in this instance, the Cypher, he's going to find value for you. So I'm ready for this Winthrop defense to see how A77 pilots that as Nazi gets an early First blood on to dip. It's a lesser buy for Northwood University, and they try to take the fight right to Winthrop. They had the right call that Winthrop would be changing things up, but they're met with an early death. And yeah, towards the beginning, before that timeout, we didn't see anybody too up close on A, but because it's an eco and because it's Northwood, we know it's going to be aggressive as one by one they go down. The classic is going to take down Flare. We're left with the last two players alive, and that turns into only Furbsa to work with. This round should be the side of one throw. Yeah, near flawless. As you mentioned, Flare goes down. Uh, Benji. Whoa, okay. A77 standing out in no man's land. Will eventually be taken down. So a consolation prize for Furbsa. He finds a kill on the way out. The round still, however, belongs to Winthrop. And uh, Benji was going with the, if I can't see you, you can't see me. He was hoping that he was hiding in the aftershock, unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately, he was not. Well, not going to be quite the case as the round goes by pretty quickly. The aggression that we got to see on that defensive side. But now that means all ultimates yeah. available on that <laughs> defensive side. And that becomes a lot scary. We talked about the lockdown. But I think also something that you can work with is that cosmic divide. Use right when you get to hear where the hit is going to be coming from. Even for that retake, it's so effective. So the first one that we get to see the Viper spit. Yeah, Winter doing a good job, though. I mean, completely changing things up. Rolling Thunder comes through. Oh, that got scary. Wow. Benji not able to reel it in, though. Stunned up by the tail end of that Rolling Thunder. Flair finds himself on the side, tosses out the rocket, almost gets one blind. Ali eventually dealt with, but he takes two kills with him. And just like that, it's the player who ulted into the back lines in Komi, who has to try and claw his way out of this one for a Winthrop victory. But it is such a tall ask. Spike out of reach. Dark is the first one up with the first one down in the 1v3. There's two more here to work with. Showstopper, though, still going to be available. And Komi trying his best to win this one. Spike, not close to him. Ultimate not available. About to be given, about to be given to 1v1s. But Furbsa close. gets it done at the end of the day. It was close. Uh, but a round where Winthrop had the idea, it just slipped away. Winthrop, with that play that we saw early on, was just insane. We, we get to see that Rolling Thunder. 
then Benji goes down because of it with that TP. Everything seemed to be going according to plan, but that V hit is just way too difficult. And we saw all the ultimates that even got invested for Winthrop. Now there's nothing. It was only one Nita, the Viper spit on A. That North would use, and that's not even what won them their round. Yeah, it wasn't even needed. They just used it. <laughs> One of five used there from Northwood. That doesn't, again, doesn't do a whole lot there. So they're still sitting on four of the ducks in their pond. Meanwhile, Moobs is going to have some good information, sure, but we'll see when those Seekers do eventually get invested. We saw two rounds of Winthrop heavy on the extremities. The last couple now, we go back towards that mid control. Yeah. And, and it heavy worked momentarily. MB. And now they're just kind of stuck in the mud. It's heavy on B as well. You only have the Killjoy Util on A. Where it's like they're willing to play for that retake. If anything, those Seekers as well, you want to respect something that... It, it, right when it becomes available, you see it being used, but not that round of the showstopper is set to start us off, and it's just a trade. Yeah, it's a huge kill from A77 to make sure that dip gets nothing more on the round. Snake Bite will keep this team at bay. 45 seconds on the clock, and Winthrop are going to have to start making some plays. There's no blast packs for Flare, so it's going to be pretty dry in the way that they look to take a site should they choose to do so. With all this space, so Darkest out towards mid, exploring, playing an adventuring game here. He's fortunate enough to back away. Not ready on the angle was Nazi. And somehow, okay, yeah. finally dealt with. Darkest almost sneaks away from all of that, but now they're walking into that Benji A setup, and he is ready for this squad. Flashes out, fault line, not close enough, not stunned, but a one-for-one one trade. And yeah, time is of the essence, but nobody is here to delay. So that means a spike here. Gonna be planted. The Seekers get activated. As that move and that rotation from the attacking side started to get played. But now it doesn't matter. It's the post plan. And Edley Furbs have the last ones alive. A good paranoia slows things down for a moment. Not ready yet. Ali not comfortable on the push just yet. Furbs are now spotted one. coming down to one HP. The two players on the site healthy, but they're not looking the right way. A backstab just around the corner. Oh, Flair's been dealt with one more. Changing. Now queued up as moves comes through. Shrouded step for the paranoia. Furps that can't quite collect that one. 34 HP separated. A Northwood win from a Northwood loss in the round belongs to Winthrop. Pretty close for that one round. And, and the smoke in the meantime, it almost ended up benefiting the side of that retake for Northwood. The Komi with one HP going for it. In the last kills, the heroic plays from Moops are able to save that round. Six so far for Winthrop. Again, a team that said this is not their best map at all. Maybe not even in the middle, and yet they're putting up a fight. They are ahead, but the question is can they keep this lead? and not turn it the way that we saw on Fracture. So Nico. We have seen crazy things in these eco rounds. Also still a couple of ultimates that could be invested. It should North would find a little bit of breathing room in this one. With four player sores mid and nobody else this time around up close. That last round it was dark as he could not run away for his life. So now he's giving up that space. A little bit of damage as well taken by Flair as you start to catch those patterns of the early presence that we see from Winthrop. Yeah, look at Northwood though. They've got the right read. Snake bite. The snake bite actually forces Winthrop the other way. Northwood had the read that the hit was coming out towards A. Darkest slows that one down. Util used to open up this B site, but unbeknownst to this attack, nobody is home. Nazi. Gonna try and clean up the pieces that slowly drift in behind and two kills to his name. Those ones are free. Trailblazer spots him out. And this round, far from Northwood, victory. Benji with to do some, something heroic here in this one. Instead, it's Comey who comes into this series off of the Fisher win. Four maps, four different agents. This guy yeah. is, is continuing. And I think somebody who I don't know if the desk mentioned it at the top of show, but somebody who could have been criticized for their performance the last time against Northwood, yeah. showing up huge on the day today. Yeah, that match that they had, the first time that these two teams faced each other when it was 
that upper bracket. It, it was a Komi that was really struggling. Uh, but since we got to see him on Monday when he was playing that, that lower bracket final, mm -hmm. he really stepped up and is, and is doing so today as well. And of course, me to write. It is the grand final. It is the time to get those agents as strong as they can be. As for that round number 11, the hit. Early on, the presence of that util is towards that A side, and that's not where Northwood is at all. Yeah, only one defender here. Oh, but that Spike one defender is... What is Darkest doing, oh, what? Dryad? What is Darkest doing? And there's only one. There's only one, but it's Darkest. That counts as the entire team for this round. Four kills for the Viper. A77, the last one into this one of 1v5 clutch that would be needed. And man, Darkus was feeling it for it. This one is the ace. Wow, A77 and the A stands for ace. It's Darkest. Last he couldn't even see house. anybody. He Return. picks up two kills for free, finds a third, finds a fourth, and cutting Spike a rug here a. on the A site. And again, just when Winthrop get a bit of wind beneath their wings, it's stripped away by an individual performance. We saw that earlier, where Darkest gets two random kills out towards yeah. mid, walks away from it all, and that started this Northwood comeback, if you will. They've only been trailing by a few rounds. He does it again, and now seven to five is available at the half, Dryad. It's just insane what this Viper can do, and he talked about it. He feels actually pretty comfortable on this Viper, strong holding these sides all by himself, and that is exactly what we got to see. The experience that he has in tier two internationally are completely unmatched, and you get to see in rounds like that one. And last run of the half, I mean, mid-control name of the game. Dip goes fishing through a smoke and finds a huge catch. And Nazi goes down one for one. Ultimate still available. Benji still sits on the lockdown, has not had a chance to get that one in play. Meanwhile, Darkest keeps the A-site single-handedly locked down, not through kills, but through way of that Viper's pit as Komi ults his way into the back lines. And that was going to be the space. Doesn't spot anybody. Usually his burps out up there. So once he gets taken down, that is a green light for that TP play to come through. But the lockdown on the other side forces this attacking side of Winthrop to back up. And Winthrop now have completely been reset on the round. They toss out a smoke to make sure nobody pushes aggressively to peek into main. But Northwood are here. The defenders are on the site. Flair finds one. It's traded right Flair back. Standing. Fortunately, Comey and moves. We're able to make I this one look exactly winnable for Winthrop are. and Darkest. Yeah, they know exactly where you are. Neural th theft, excuse me. Spike for all planted. the information and five kills in the last would need a 1v3 here in this one. But essentially, a 1v5 is what he was given. And look at Winthrop. They know the, the strengths of this player. They're marching around as a unit. You want to be careful. Don't want to give those 1v1s to Darkest for sure. Even after he gets spotted. Gonna get paranoid. Trying to waste this time for the round. Secure the eighth one for one throw. It drops down silently. Comey using that paranoia to use that shrouded step to get up top. Finds the first. Can't quite find the next. The team ace. Finds its way through and Winthrop University have themselves an 8-4 scoreline at the half, Dryad. And once again, it's an 8-4 where Winthrop has to lead. But that was the question on that last map of Fracture. Can they keep the lead all the way until the end? And for Fracture, it wasn't the case. But for this one, the Winthrop ha fans are hoping there's going to be a possibility to take us to a map number four, even number five for that reverse sweep. And yeah, we've seen a map four previously. Can we get it again as we jump into our halftime break? The teams are going to be gearing up. So let's go ahead and take a listen from Ferbsa on what winning today's championship title would mean for Northwood. I think winning the championship is all about just establishing like our dominance. Like I think our record right now is like 55 and one with like one loss. So it, winning Seaval, which I think is like the biggest like event outside of like Red Bull Campus Clutch, um, I, I think it will solidify our um, our position as like the number one Valorant team. Yeah, I mean 55 and one. Just your average day. Casual. Is, uh... Northwood player. Yeah, just a casual 55 <laughs> and one. You talked about the 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 finishes that they've had, the the times, the amount of times they've th seen themselves in grand finals. Yep. They have been clear favorites domestically and internationally, but nobody's done this. 
right? That's huge to, to go and do what you did uh, at Campus Clutch to beat teams from all around the world. But this means something different, right? Our first year of uh, the CVAL championship where everybody is getting involved. You're getting to do it right here from the Riot Games Arena. I mean, this is a different feeling. This would put them and really cement them as a team that is on another level. Absolutely. And it is that state because everybody sees Northwood as the best team in collegiate, no mm -hmm. doubt about it. But like you said, this is different. This would even solidify it even more being the first ones to win it and continue this dominance of all the tournaments that they've played since 2022, playing 11 tournaments, winning, getting to the grand finals and winning nine of them. Who else is able to tell that story? Yeah, and on the flip side for Winthrop University, much like their matchup on Monday, right? Uh, playing second fiddle to Fisher over and over and over, but none of it mattered because when they showed up to play for who's going to be King of the East, they end up taking that one. So they could erase all of this Northwood history if they got it done here. Now, brick by brick, one step at a time is where Winthrop University are at. An eight to four Tactics half, much like what we power. saw on Fracture as they mount their defense here in the second half split. And the defense in the past, everybody would talk about the defensive side of split, how good it is. But with the aggression that we've seen from these players, it can be a different story. And a Winthrop they proactive throughout the map. Yeah, I mean, speaking of aggressive, flares all the way through B, out towards mid, makes the call, says, hey, nobody's home. Let's go ahead and play out towards this A site where A77 and moves are starting to collect. And only two left alive, Ali and Benji. Benji goes down by the pain shells. And the pistol seems almost perfect by Winthrop. Ooh, a near flawless pistol, like you mentioned. A77, the only one to fall, but not before finding two kills. And that's the difference maker, right? Eight to four at the half. We swap sides. They take the pistol, and Winthrop keep this momentum moving forward. That's exactly what Winthrop needed to do. Something that secures and gives that extra confidence, extra momentum to work with with the pistol and... And A77, that comes back into this game. We saw him before clutching the first pistol off split. He does it for the first kills this time around. And now proactively looking for that space, right? Not letting Northwood take it first. Not much of a reinvestment for Northwood. Benji and Ferbsa, of course, with Sheriff in hand. I think you'd expect nothing less. But also a, a modest purchase on the opposite side for Winter. Nobody really getting outside themselves. Uh, to buy up, you know, the the real rifles. Sorry to the Bulldog. I didn't mean to put the Bulldog down like that, but no Vandals, no Phantoms is basically what I'm saying. Nothing at all as well to work with. Any crazy buys for the side of North with. And, and for this round, even willing to slow things down, but on the other side, even giving that respect, Flare goes down. No way it goes like this. Yeah, and while all this is happening out towards A, the spike was working towards B. Ferbs are finding that kill. I mean, they just have so many options now, uh, that being Northwood. And there are two players closer to A. Decided so to go instead for mid. As yeah, that, sp that spike has not been spotted just yet. Uh, I mean, you're in the middle of the fight, Nasty. Nothing you can do. Nowhere to hide. Goes down. And a Spectre here for Dev. Oh my god! Comey needed to do the unthinkable, and he just about did it. Three players come swinging through B Heaven, and Comey cuts him down. Now Moob's gonna have to try to do the same. Two flashes, spike planted. One player dealt with, where's the next? It's Darkest, the last man standing in a round that seemed out of reach at the start for Northwood, but they reel it back in. Moves will try and do it, but Darkest a bit better on the round, and Northwood get it done. Second round, second half, it belongs to the attack. Insane round the anti-eco and the 1v2 to work with moves. Trying to make it happen, gets the first kill, goes for the flash, plays it as best as he can, and yet Darkest gets the best of it. Swings just by the time he hears a flash coming through. And that is enough. I mean, if it's not the, the pistol and then the bonus, it is it has to be this, right? The anti-eco going to set up Northwood. Wow. Again, just no breathing room. No breathing room at all for Winthrop. This next round starts and moved, moves immediately. Erased a couple of sheriffs 
and again, we've seen these eco rounds. They've been interesting, but it's been for Northwood that has made these ones interesting. We'll see if Winthrop can put up a fight here. Oh, man. I mean, Furbs just won't allow it. I, I think, I mean, just that last round, heartbreaking for Winthrop. When you lose that Antaika, it never feels good. No, I mean, it's all been heartbreak for Winthrop. They have not had a chance. They've been trying to play to the snowball, but it's summertime. That snowball just continues to melt as Northwood put a flawless round on the board. And now what do you do? Again, much like the previous maps, right? Winthrop are hearing the footsteps. Northwood are right behind them, catching up to them. And because of that, we're seeing the nerves. You saw it for the last round, especially Moobs was the only one up close. So A tries to go for a flash play, but he's completely isolated, taken down. And that's all the space the Northwood needed for that one. I mean, you're hoping for a quick reset if you're on the side of Winthrop. No, no timeouts or anything, right? It has to be with this rounds, with the skills to get that confidence back. A short term memory is what Winthrop need in these difficult rounds. Dib hoping to catch somebody off guard, but nobody wants to go too aggressive instead of playing off the util. They just keep it as information and three players on the swing there. Always still walks away with one healthy. Well, as healthy as you can be after being shot by three people. He can't heal himself, but a one for one trade at the end of the day. There's a trade and nothing else. And one kill, one orb here is going to be needed. One spike planted for Darkest to get that Viper spit. Massive for that post plant. But first, they're going to have to deal with a race up close. It's going to be Flare. I'm trying to slow this push from happening. Yeah, the paint shells are doing the trick. Cosmic Divide comes down and cuts the site in half. But I mean, both players here for Winthrop are on the right side of the wall. I say the right side, but Darkest just walks up. Erases the first, Flash comes through. Nazi gonna try his hand to kill to his name. Wants a third, Furbs will deny. One Meanwhile, out towards remaining. mid, Comey also oh, getting caught it. as he lurks his way on through. But the spike is down. Moves is alive. Moves has a chance to redeem himself. A 1v2 with the spike in his control, but he walks right into the sight lines of both players and Northwood University continue this march forward. And the smokes as well for Move, just so annoying to deal with with both of the players up close. There was a chance, but slips away. Northwood, they're slowly doing it. They're making that comeback happen again on this potential last map that we get to see that happening. Three rounds in a row, and Ika coming through for Winthrop. And two runs away from tying things up on split. The confidence was high early on for Winter, but then it slowed down. Okay, the good protection. damage there. Good damage there. Boombot gets nothing. Information garnered by uh, the jump peak there of Dip. Will be healed up though. Regrowth from Ali will find their raise back at 100 HP. And this aggression does not stop Winthrop pushing all the way through B main. And the smokes attempting to make Stop things up. a little bit more annoying towards mid, but there is nobody there. They pushed up, find nothing Turn just yet, first. just dark as on A. And that's called moves backs up. The, the spike still moseying around mid will eventually make a decision. Flash for flash, nobody spotted on the opposite side, A77. About to be put in a world of hurt as Ferb so we'll get those stars down. Smokes are up, Cam has been dealt with. And here comes the hit. Two players. The backside of A Heaven. The first one dealt with. Nice shots from Moves. We'll capitalize on one. Comey finds another. Make it two for Comey. Going absolutely huge. And the spike down again in an unfavorable position. Darkest gonna try and scoop that one up, but with the rifle on the other side through the smoky stands. Nazi gets it done with the right click. The classic just enough. With 14 seconds, we've seen Benji be good, but I don't know if he can be this good. Three more players to worry about. Flair closes out the round, and hey, they wipe the sweat from their brow. They get it done in thrifty fashion, and Winthrop are back in the win column. And another thrifty for Winthrop. Double digits, too, on this third map. With the defense looking better, it initially got worried a little bit, backing up so much from the A side after they get that first contact of Darkest. 
but then going for it it's massive what Komi is able to do just baiting out with two players in that position Komi just holding patiently for his chance and he gets it yeah really drawing them deeper into a heaven isolating fights for himself and winning those fights that was the most important thing there for Komi Two huge kills, weapon picked up, spike down. That basically meant the round. Now Winthrop go back to it. Aggression towards okay. B main. Doesn't stop as Winthrop all the way through. Here they go. Dip trying to get run down. Paint shells out turret. We'll try and help him out for just a moment. The stun has subsided and Benji does it again. This guy, I mean, he is the kryptonite to Rolling Thunders. It, rolling Thunder does not affect him. It, it doesn't matter. How unwinnable it seems for Benji. He is gonna get those duels and one by one Northwood slowly back into this round. I, I mean, that was even a crazy play for Winthrop on the defense. They go for this friendly thunder play they've never done before. They don't go as aggressive ever. They try to switch things up and it's not working out at all. Ace and we see him coming. It's off to them to clutch this one. When they find the first wire, not the second. A77 collects one off of his util. Skolmi slowly brings up the rear. But I mean, it's a solo mission for both players that survive Unimportant. for this Winthrop squad. Comey, though, I mean, no. this guy, a solo mission, sure, a single player game, and he has taken down boss after boss as a 77 comes through to cut it down to one. Ali has to hang on, a paranoia on the backside as Comey taps a spike. Comey does it again for three. And so patient all around the last two players, but they clutch it. We've seen those scenarios of the man disadvantage go the way of Northwood, but this one, a massive round for it to go the way of Winthrop. And again, Komi, massive for it. Oh my wire. Oh. We talked about it, but I'm gonna say it again. Komi coming up when it matters most. Much like the series on Monday, much like what it would mean for Winthrop to win today. When you put up performances like this, the past doesn't matter. What happens, yeah. or what matters is what's happening right now. Comey at 18 and nine. 18 and nine, sure, but the frags that he's finding to continue to put his team in winning situations. Is Dip looking to do just that? Takes the first fight, Flare completely flashed, taken down, had no way to fight back into that one. As Comey looks to rotate to the opposite side of the map. No, they think this is a fake triad, but Northwood are here. And it's two players only, but the two players once again can't be enough. The Trailblazer doesn't spot anything up close. It's everybody towards heaven. Oh, and the showstopper not gonna have time to get anything. A down to one HP. That's what Nazi survives as he walks away, gets healed up by moves. Seekers available for the sky. We'll see if those make an appearance here in round 19. And there's only one person here on this B site, but it's the person you want, the anchor you need. Comey looks to play inside the pit. He wants to catch Darkus off guard. He's looking for a back stab. He spots the Viper, takes him down, and that ult means absolutely nothing. Uh, and in the meantime, this play, they knew what it was happening. The Seekers come through for moves. They know the play was going to end up on A. The Viper's pit was just a fake. And just a fake here, Util used. Now moves finally getting into the action. Nazi will find another return on investment from that regrowth as Nazi finds a kill. And Ali in a similar situation to rounds previous. It was a 1v2. Unfortunately, things didn't go all these way. This time a 1v4, but he doesn't have the time. Paranoia comes through, 877 closes it out in Winthrop. They want a map four. And it's gonna be Match point. one more round to secure it. Ideally in a row with the momentum that has been going off for Winthrop. And a nerf with trying to stop this, trying to close it in three maps. But it's not going to be so easy. The economy. Pretty much the worst it can be for this one. You're depending on those ultimates that they've been saving, right? We saw the one from Darkest last, that last round. But here, Benji has been holding on to this lockdown round after round. It is the network never situation to go for it. And those initial picks, those thrifty rounds that we've seen, are going to depend on it. And look who it is, Winthrop, to call a timeout right at the end. They have five rounds to play with. When you look at the players, cam player cams, everybody seemingly stoic. 
soaking up the information from the coaches. It's darkest. Chirps it out. Darkest the mid-rounder for this squad. Yep. Probably has a lot to say. I think none of it matters, though, when you look at this and you say, man, that is... I mean, you are, are quite honestly, you're looking for yard sale signs if you're Northwood University, and you're hoping to get something on sale because you do not have the best economy behind you. And we've yeah. seen miracles, but surely not again. Surely. Surely, surely not surely again. Not again. Yeah, when it's like this with the back against the wall and a map like this one, it does seem a lot more difficult for Northwood. But for these guys, nothing's impossible. So you got to see how it's going to play out. With the sheriffs that have been clean from Furbs, have you seen it from Darkest, from Benji especially, the players at the top. Oh, oh man, I thought we were seeing a different play here. I thought Flair was going to have the high ground. Off of that flash, we would see Moob send one back and then Flair going with the showstopper instead. Stoic is Flair as he holds his position. And it is uh, the oh default of all defaults here from Northwood University. The buy, two Bulldogs, a Stinger, two Sheriffs. They're going to try. Can try with that 4 1 set up early on. Only Dark is on the other part of the map. It's the first time we've seen this position. Oh, the Trailblazer spots it, though. This could have been huge for Comey instead. He's been given up, spotted out. Paint just come through. Dip gonna now try his hand. Shots, they land good. I mean, no you way. just cannot challenge Comey here. Not here on split. Comey continues it. And just like that, in the blink of an eye, a flawless finish. Winthrop dominant here in map three. And we're headed to a map four. We get to see that map four with a Winthrop. That had a soul start in the first maps, but this one, this split, a different story completely, knowing what those big win conditions were going to be. And besides the players, you know, besides Comey, besides what we got to see from Nasty as well, uh, and the IGL, and the, the adaptation on time, yeah. it, it was knowing that this was a now or never situation. We need to win this map. We need to take it all the way, and they're just one step ahead for well, that. And let's remember how that map started. It started with A77, Making a hero play in yep. the pistol round where, again, things started to seem uh, as soon as Northwood gets a little bit of mo momentum, we haven't seen them lose it. But then Comey from A77 to Comey to go huge there. I mean, that right there has to be everything that Winthrop needed. We talked about a reverse sweep. We talked about a reverse sweep, Dryad. It could be. And now it's possible. Obviously, a lot to talk about there as we send things to the analyst desk after this Winthrop victory. Thank you very much, y'all. And there it is, the tinfoil hat. We wondered how it was going to be done. You did predict 3-2. We're on route there. What do you think here, Gompers? Actually, Moobs is better. <laughs> I... All right, then. I'll, I'll take the hit, then. I'll take the ball for that, man. I was not expecting this to go four maps. Yeah. They don't often go to four maps, but huge props to Winthrop for pulling it out at the very end. I think they needed, obviously they needed this map to stay alive, but it's also like, they needed a lot coming in his confidence. They also need to step up individually, and they did that on almost every single front. Well, actually, actually, uh, Moves was the uh, lowest ACS in the line. Uh -huh. Actually, we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Well, there it is. Uh, Comey, the huge hero in this one. And the reason why I love this, in their series, in the winner's bracket finals, Comey was actually the lowest ACS and the lowest uh, performing member of the squad in that series in the winner's bracket. Yeah, he went negative in 34 against Northwood. So for Comey to come alive, I think we saw really good glimpses, especially in that last round, how good he was as a defensive anchor, putting really nice smokes downs for his team as well. I think Comey stepped up massively, especially given what he put up against last time against Northwood. Yeah, and kind of, again, moving on to your point with being able to step up for the team, that's something huge that Winthrop has that not a lot of people do. It's the fact that Comey sees, okay, moves isn't in that headspace. Let me step up for a second here. Let me make sure that I can make those frags happen. And, it, you know, maybe at a later date, at a later map, that we can start to find our pace again right because that's the story we set up that's the story that Winthrop have told all year long yeah. it's the move show and everyone else are fantastic supports they give him the information he can frag out he does fine in the chaos you kind of wonder how much of those off shots back on fracture was left on over in every single round that Winthrop lost yeah. uh, you know and we got a quick glimpse of the player cams it moves looked like he was in pain each one of those losses are hurt 
even though they still get the overall on that victory here. Yeah, that's one player that we move forward. He's got to come back alive. Like, there's just no question about it. I think we give him a little bit of leeway because this isn't his map. He doesn't play the Rage. He doesn't play the yeah. Jet. But he's going to be someone that, you know, he looks a little bit dejected right now. He absolutely needs to step up. And I think that's a big confidence boost for the team as a whole to win that map, even without moves. So back in round 11, we're a little worried here. Winthrop, smooth sailing. Things looked good. But yeah. then round 11, similar to the last round or last map, they drop a round. They shouldn't lose. You wonder if the mental goes boom here. And this is a scary thing because you can see here in the replay, it's so many 1v1 swings against this guy, yeah. Darkest. And this is what kind of like worries me is that Winthrop, they always start off really strong. Like they always have really good first halves, but then things kind of just come cascading down and they start making very small mistakes. And at this point in time, we're getting to an extremely long best of five series where the mental and the fatigue is going to start to set in. Everyone's kind of got to step up and say, hey, we can't make these kinds of mistakes. And obviously, you need a voice in this team to say, hey, let's calm it down a little. Take that tactical timeout, which they have been doing even when they're winning. Yeah, it, it's it's difficult to even say or to talk about, too, because there have been so many key moments where, you know, you could see that step up come through. And honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. At some point, I, I was starting to think that Northwood was going to run away with this. But again, you have things like, uh, you know, those sudden key moments like Comey again stepping up to be able to push that team even further. Around 14, we had an almost clutch here. Again, uh, another situation. With the, when the pistol round, you're like, OK, things are good. Not exactly here when uh, things go awry. And this is the one that hurts a lot and we all got to see the player cams comey just or apologies not comey moves seemed so so dejected after this like he was so close and i and i was sitting here and i was like dude if he wins this clutch if he wins this clutch the mental's just gonna immediately go up from a guy like moves and then we're gonna see this guy come back online but we didn't but still the key thing i think in this map is they did it without moves and that's a big confidence boost just for the rest of it rest of the team yeah huge shout out to nasi we did a ton of uh calling out his performance in the lower bracket grand final where he was the rock. He was the one that kept things going, yeah. stayed positive until it was moves that turned online. This time it was Comey turned online. Here in round 17, we talk about how important the double digit victory is, especially in close rounds. And th this was an eco, by the way. They had only shares. They had a really nice setup here. They had two players in towards heaven. One kind of takes the heat, one back towards elbow. And it was this really nice trap setup. It was a lot of Northwood exploiting this mid side and taking control over towards Vents. But then eventually, I think Winthrop kind of switched the tempo and we're like, okay, we're on an eco. Let's try something different. Let's let them come to us. And as they did on Fracture, they welcomed the aggression. They responded with themselves. All right. Well, with that, Northwood will be switching on over to Icebox. Oh, my god! Again, we, we highlighted it as a thing where, you know, maybe it'll come to Icebox. Maybe it's a 3-0. How much have these teams practiced Icebox, let alone practice alone, according to some of the Northwood players? This is really now an opportunity for Winthrop to pick it up and go to a mat number five. I think it's because I'm wearing the tin hat. <laughs> 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 Okay. I'm feeling a lot of that brain work going on, okay? Listen, I said they hadn't played Icebox a lot, maybe three times in the last three months, and you, you heard Logan, nobody plays Icebox anymore, let's be real. Uh, and one of those things I definitely think could be a huge factor. Again, Split was one of those maps I actually talked about before when we first started, that Northwood had not played frequently. And I think that is a huge advantage on the side of Winthrop. I look so ridiculous right now, but I think that's a huge advantage oh on the gosh. side of Winthrop. And I think overall, again, that's going to bring them even further if we're looking at that icebox map i think yeah. that's going to give moves that confidence because it's so versatile final point the flip side is that moves doesn't have the confidence because he hasn't played this map in forever and he doesn't know exactly because again icebox has been out of the meta and out of the map rotation for a long long time these guys are playing in the tier two circuit as well and they're not playing this map on a consistent basis so the flip side of the argument is both teams have never played this map right. and moves isn't going to have that full confidence because he's not as comfortable on a map that he hasn't played recently especially when he's getting outpointed by the other team star and Furbza, who's been humming every single round or in every single map. Someone you got to pay attention to. Darkest had a heck of a round. Final thoughts here, Gompers. My response to that, all I'm hearing is, no, 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 no. Cry about it. <laughs> She's got no argument. The tinfoil hat provides nothing. No argument to this case. Hey, well, the tinfoil hat predicted that it would be a 3-2, and that yeah. prediction is You're still wrong. alive. We'll find out after the break if it comes to fruition. Will it be Northwood claiming the title, or are we getting pushed to a fifth map? We'll find out. See you in a bit.